Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Xiong Hua Yang, a professor in computer science department at the University of Reading, UK. My presentation is data distillation enhanced autoencoder for detecting anomalous gas consumptions. I will give you a background introductions and then we move to framework consists of three stages, pre-processing, normal user part instructions, learning-based anomaly detections, and now we introduced experiments which we 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 done. Uh, data, data set in baseline ablation studies and results analysis. And then we will introduce the real applications of our approaches. Finally, that is the summary of the presentation. So we know that the gas natural gas use has been good rapidly due to the promotion of clean energy and the economic benefit of natural gas. For detecting anomalous gas consumptions, people normally do the on-site inspections and annual, uh, annual gas meter checkup, which are very time consume and inten labor intensive and time consuming. So also lack of real-time feedback. And if we using the technologies of Internet of Things and using smart meters, and we can collect real-time collect the data from these smart meters. So we may be able to use the data we collected to help us to do the um, abnormal detections and then, um, which is the basis for the for our work. So the problem is that giving a time series of gas consumption, for example, X, we have a, um, uh, X is the, is the vector, X1 to XT. T is the total number of the sampling. Our aim is to using this time series data to detect whether any kind of alumni can be detected. We know there's a number of uh, causes can cause uh, the data, uh, the abnormal detection and the ab abnormal in the real-time data. For example, the very old gas meters or damage uh, accidentally or intention intentionally uh, made by the users or even the wireless data transmissions, or some people's different and just steal the gas from the pipeline. So our assumption is the abnormally, abnormally are real compared with the normal cases. The pattern of anomalous gas consumptions must deviate from the pattern of the normal gas consumptions. So that is, these assumptions are reasonable. So first we look at what is the framework we proposed. The framework has three stages. The first one is pre-processing and the rule-based alarm detections. What that means? So we got a, we got the uh, row gas meters, uh, gas meter uh, reading. So this part, we got this part gas meter readings. And then we want to use the meters, meter readings to do the detections. First of all, we need to improve the quality of data, me, uh, data readings, which is the pre -processes. More than that, we can embed it, the operator's knowledge, which we call the root base, uh, to do the anomaly detections. Here we call the uh, rule-based anomaly detections. Using the rule-based normal detections, we can identify some reading level anomalous abnormal weekly gas consumption sequence. And we can get the reading level normal weekly gas consumption sequence. So that is this part. And then after we got the, the reading level normal weekly gas consumptions, and then we can using our mm, and data mining or method to get a normal, extract the normal user pattern. So why we focus on the normal 
um, gas consumption data because it's, it's very rare to happen the abnormal um, consumption data. And also, it is in, almost impossible or very hard to label the data, say, which is normal, which is abnormal. So what we can do is we only use the normal data, normal gas consumption data, and train a normal models. And uh, apply the model, apply the normal models to any kind of data, and then see if we can find out something goes wrong for the um, real-time data. So after we, the step two is we get the normal user party instructions. And then using normal user party instructions, we can get rid of some of the species weekly gas con consumption sequence. Why are we using weekly rather than daily? Because the gas, uh, gas consumption behavior is, is repeatedly in weekly rather than in daily. For example, uh, working day or weekend, they have some, so they have keep a party, weekly party rather than daily parties. So that's why we, we segment the, the data into a, into, into a weekly data. After we got the normal um, user party instructions, we got the normal data. And then we use normal data to train our machine learning method, which were which is the step three, learning-based anomaly detections, learning-based anomaly detections here. So that is the end of our uh, uh, framework. Okay, so the left-hand side is the training path. The right-hand side is the test path. Once we got the test, test data, and then we can do the pre-processing, um, pre-processing and root-based anomaly detections and get rid of the, uh, um, the reading level, uh, abnormal, it can um, abnormal weakens data sequence. And then uh, fit in the normal weekly gas consumption sequence into the machine learning models. And then uh, see based on the output of this machine learning model, we can detect if there is any anomaly or not. So this is our framework. Now, we introduce the step by step. So first one, we do the preprocessing and root based anomaly detections. Yeah, this step, uh, step consists of four stages. The first one, we need to calculate gas conceptions and the segment the data into weekly sequence. So why? What this means? We calculate these conceptions because the, the real time data collected from user is the accumulated data in total by so far the use has consumed. So we want to get the consumption data for, uh, in the, for the uh, individual moment. So we're using uh, the previous collection data and the current collection data and uh, mm, find out the difference. That is the uh, gas conception in that particular moment, so first one. And also, because we say that the, the patterns normally you weaken, you weak, uh, weakening patterns, so we segment the data into weakening sequence. After that, we can detect the zero conception anomaly. What that means, you know, for one week, you cannot consume zero gas meter and gas. So there must be something goes wrong if the read is zero. So you look at these equations. So T, for example, uh, we, we, we take uh, one hour, one point. So every day we have uh, 24 points. Seven days a week, we have uh, 168 points. So T will be equal 168. And then if we add that together, it's equal to zero. So one whole week, if you do not consider and consume any data in you know, gas, that is the that is wrong. So we got a zero consumption anomalies. And the, also, if you consume the negative consumptions, that is impossible. So you cannot, con the, the consuming data must be positive or greater than zero. So we, we check if there is any negative consumption anomalies. And then 
if there is values less than zero, we say that is the uh, negative consumption anomalies. And then the finally, we say we uh, the gas consumptions cannot be suddenly changed a lot. So that is the bursting consumptions. We just uh, get uh, the maximum value, maximum consumption for a week. And that this one is the average. This one, so T is 168 and D is 24. So we got a daily, daily points. So in total, that is a weekly a maximum consumption point, the average of the uh, daily maximum um, gas consumptions. So if your value is big than the, the, the maximum, the average for certain value, certain um, for certain extents, and then we say that is a plastic consumption. That is the we remove that. So we remove the zero consumption, selective consumption, and bursting consumptions, and then we got a re reading level normal weekly gas consumption sequence. Now the second one, we need to um, extract the normal use of patterns. So normal use patterns for a same, we use in two kind of the evaluation. One is called the intra-use consistency evaluations. The other one is called the inter-use consistency evaluations. So what is the intra-use consistency evaluations? That means that for a same user, for uh, for a same for a same user, this week and the previous week, the week before the next week and the previous week should be a you know, the pattern should be similar. And if the weekly pattern is not consistent, we say that must be something wrong. So we use in person, using uh, person correlations to calculate the coefficient. And uh, if the correlation coefficient is less than 0 0.3, we say, uh, normally the coefficient is from minus one to positive one. So if less than 0 0.3, we say that is the very weakly consistent that with something wrong. So, and the second um, um, point is consider inter-user consistent evaluations. Say for a same type of user, for example, just all is a restaurant, same type of user, but it's different user in the same categories. They are, they should be, the, 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 the value, the, the actual value they consumed could be different, but the pattern must be similar. So we can we just the cluster, clustering the clustering the data consumption, and then if they are belong to the same cluster or similar, and then we say that's consistent. Otherwise, it's not consistent. But in order to very 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 clearly identify if they belong to one same cluster or not, we use it permutation intro, entropy to, to get the, um, to convert the original data into the entropy data, HMP values. And then we calculate the center, class centers. And then for each individual instance, if they are far away from the centers, and then we say that's not consistent. They are not belong to the same class. So we're using intra-user and inter-user consistency evaluations and then to extract the normal user patterns. The next one is once we got the normal weekly gas consumption sequence, and then we use an ND, uh, uh, encoder and decoder and to train the our machine learning models. And then so the output of the the input of the encoder is the real normally uh, normal weight gas consumption sequence. The output of the decoder is the reconstructed sequence. If the input and the output, if the real uh, normally weekly gas consumption data is similar to reconstructed sequence data, and then we say that is normal because this model is only between used by using the normal data. Okay, say we import some data which is abnormal, but you didn't know that. And then uh, get to the encoder and then go get out from the decoder. And then uh, reconstruct because the data has not been trained in the models. The reconstructed sequence must be 
significantly different from the input. So we we see the alumni score of the we, we choose the loss, the similarity, and uh, we get the alumni score. We say if that is the alumni score is higher, and then we say the data is abnormal. So that is our stage, uh, stage three. Now we do the, our experiment. We have uh, three categories of users. One is restaurant, one is in the canteen. We separate that into the training set and the test set. And uh, in total numbers, uh, total number of use, guest users, uh, restaurant is 481, and canteen is 501, and total number of samples is this much. And uh, we do the we do the test. And also we have we, we need a number of baseline to compare with our approaches. One is the local out, outer life uh, uh, factor, a lot of one is isolated forest, and one class uh, SVM, or uh, do, uh, do not, also, and a deep auto encoder, uh, Gaussian max, uh, max, uh, mixture uh, model. So that is the uh, baseline which we are going to use to compare with our uh, approach. And also we do uh, we designed a number of the uh, ablation studies. So this is the, our um, approach. We are rule based first in the first stage. We use rule based uh, uh, pre processes, pre uh, pre processes, and then we use intra uh, uh, use uh, inter use uh, consistency evaluations. And at the end, we got the encoder, decoder, and we use the cosine similarity. That is our approach. So we make change to the components of our approach. For example, we just change the, uh, we, do, we removed the in, intra uh, and the outra, uh, intra and inter uh, use parting structures. And uh, for this one, we just uh, uh, re, uh, remove the inter-consistence evaluations. And for the V3, we just keep rules intra and inter-consistence, but we replace the auto-encoder auto with cosine and similarity with the one class SVM. The final one is we are just chain replace the, replace the cosine similarity with the L1 and see what happened. So this is the uh, our results. So the table two is for restaurant data. So you can see that uh, we compare with our uh, uh, the, the baseline, and we continue our approach is much better. Table two, table three is the for canteen user. It's very similar. Our our uh, approach uh, is better. It's outperformed. And uh, also we do the ablation studies for restaurant data. And then we compare with the four different versions of the um, uh, variance. And uh, we, we get uh, and the top three, top five, top seven, top 15 uh, results. What is top three means that you get the, uh, your, 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 your output three, the uh, top 3%. Top and if your true abnormal is inside, is within the top 3%, and we say that's correct. And similarly, you got top five, top 10, top 50. And for the counting user, we do the similar things. And I see, uh, you can see that we, our approach is much, much better than the and, uh, other uh, variants of our, in our um, application studies. So what that means is that it is essential to keep our, keep the structure of our approach. And uh, we, we apply this system into a, a real applications. And that uh, this is you know, the main display in, in, the, uh, in, a, major, in a major city uh, in China, which we uh, implement our studies in our res uh, results. So can indicate the system the status, user categories, smart meter status, and anomalies, and also the meter range. And that, uh, automatically give you detection results and you can see the detail where the, 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 field, the, the pattern has been changed and when has been changed. And for this one, 
you see that no more kids. This is the restaurant, and the, the left hand side is restaurant, and the right hand side is canteen data. And uh, the and the top one is the real data, and uh, the bottom one is the you know, decode the output is reconstruct the data. You can see that they are very similar. What that means, the input of the data is belong to the normal case. So the that's why the reconstruct the sequence for both users much well with the uh, with the original data samples. This one, the real data with the reconstruct data is different difference. So that means that we can catch the abnormal detections, now, catch no abnormal cases. This one you show that we we have some the, this show the limitations of our approaches. So some of the features we cannot learn because they are not significant abnormalities. So there is no there is no significant abnormality in the data. So we cannot distinguish the, the difference. So the real data like this, but reconstructed data also is similar. But unfortunately, this data. Is for the is for the uh, abnormal case. So that means that we are we fail to identify this kind of the abnormal cases. So, so that is the what we have present. In summary, what we propose is we propose a data distribution enhanced autoencoder for detecting anomalous gas conceptions of non-residential gas uses induced by various reasons such as malfunctioning, gas meters, gas leakage, gas safe. But we just using our normal data. We do not need to label the data, uh, abnormal data. By encoding the knowledge of domain expert, so we are using the rule-based anomaly detection models to get a reading level anomaly detected. And we using integrated correlation between the intra-use evaluations and clustering based the intra-use consistency evaluations, and then to distill, uh, distill the reading level normal data samples. And finally, we use in the autoencoder based anomaly detection models to trim with our distillated samples, which is the 100% normal data patterns. And that because we only use in the we only fit the normal data into the autoencoders mm. models. So if any kind of abnormal data come to the uh, come into the autoencoders, the reconstructed data will be significantly different from the input of the autoencoders. That therefore we can uh, identify or de detect the abnormal and uh, uh, data. So with the with the real data, a real world gas conception data set, we have carried out extensive experiments and have shown our effectiveness of our approach compared with the baseline. And also, we have done uh, sufficient ablation studies. And then we say all the components in our approach is essential, cannot be replaced. And the, the structure of our approach is uh, efficient. So that is the uh, uh, that is can be uh, evidenced and that is evidenced by our application studies. Finally, I want to thank my colleagues um, and Dr. Zhu, Dr. Uh, Professor Jiang, and Professor Din, and uh, uh, my student and um, and other uh, colleagues, Professor Hei, and my industry co uh, partners, Guo Zhong Zhu and Yanni Qin. Thanks for their uh, contributions in the work. Thank you.